Hello and welcome to the Retro Gamer Show. Yes, and we've been sat here with our popcorn waiting for you guys because we've got something really exciting to show you. It's the premiere, yes, the world premiere of our brand new intro. Down in front. Run VT. <laughs> Well, what do you guys make of that new intro? Yeah, well, hopefully you liked it. It took me a whole two hours on a Saturday morning, that. Well, let's find out what's on this month's Retro Gamer Show. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> We've got a new feature for you. It's called Games Roundup. We know you guys love it. Yes, it's back. It's Show Us Your Collection. Colin takes a look at a new book all about his favourite console, the Vectrex. It's back with a new look, it's Games Chart Flashback. And we've got a roundup of some great retro gaming events in What's On. So sit back, relax and enjoy the new look Retro Gamer Show. Right, before all of that we're going to do something else that's new uh, after our brand new intro. And uh, that is uh, each month we're going to start the show from now on with a little bit of news or a little bit of information that we've uh, picked up. And uh, we're going to choose a piece each. Uh, so James, uh, what bit of news or info have you got for us this month? Well, do you remember a few months ago we covered this arcade racing game, PS4? You really liked it, I really liked uh, it. Yes, a, a Rise and Chase Turbo. Yeah, yeah, that's it. A great yeah. example of a retro style game on the new system. It is absolutely superb game. Yeah. Well... That is going to get a physical release in the wow. UK from Numskull Games. Because it's only been available as download up until now, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but the physical release, they're going to release it, so you're going to be able to buy it. It's going to be out very soon, September the 30th. All right, think. well, September's my birthday. Is it? Oh, September, so, yeah. Hint, hint. Um, hint, hint. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, you can physically own it. It's going to be a physical release by yeah. Numskull Games. Because up to now, it's only been available as a physical copy in Brazil, so you've had to like, mm. import it if you want a copy. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's always nice to have an actual copy of the game, especially if you like it like, 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 like I do. You know, it's obviously done so well that yeah. people have said, look, we want Wanted. a physical release, and Numskull have stepped up and said, yeah, done let's the deal do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, brilliant. Great news, that. Great mm. start. Good, good news to start with. Right, so my bit of news is that this is now available. Yes, it's uh, issue six of Fusion magazine, the bi-monthly magazine from the guys at uh, Retro Fusion Books, Chris Wilkins and the team. Mm. Always a good read. It's we, brilliant. Yeah, we've been reading it from issue one. And uh, this uh, issue is no different. And the main uh, theme or sort of story this month is uh, Cannon Fodder. Uh, and a great cover is always done by uh, Trevor Story there on the front. Mm. With some great artwork. And of course, uh, Cannon Fodder, uh, Stu Cambridge, who we met mm. at Revival recently, yeah. Yeah. he um, did all the graphics for that. So Silly Steve got his uh, kit that's signed. That's right, yeah. Um, we featured that in the last month's show, if you guys remember that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so he's telling us all about the making of uh, Cannon Fodder. Um, there's a lot of other good stuff in here as well. There's always a good mixture of new and old stuff in here as well. And there's a game that I wanted to need, must read the review of it, but if anybody knows if it's any good, um, uh, Plague's Tale. Yeah, they give it a, an eight. I've not read the review, like I say yet, but it seems interesting. It keeps popping up everywhere. I keep seeing it, sort of like on all the social media and okay. all the rest of oh, it. What platform? It's on PlayStation Four, Xbox One, and PC. Oh, apparently, all the majors. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm going to definitely want to know. So if anyone knows that's any good, I want to know because I definitely want to play that. There's a bit of an update on the Zap Sixty Four. Um, Kickstarter because uh, that's obviously been all sorted and they're on the way to those of us that backed it. I definitely backed it, Good. so looking forward to that. Our friend Neil from the Retro Man Caves in here. He's always in here every month. Does a, an article every month, and uh, this month we see he went to Revival. We've seen him at Revival as well, and uh, that took him sort of back to when he went to his first ever sort of event, game mm. event, and uh, so he's telling us all about that. I won't tell you what it is because that will spoil the Some surprise. Some great photos. Yeah, there is. Um, there's also 
um, an interesting bit in here by uh, the Oliver Twins, again, someone else that was ever yeah. valuable, um, and they're in here every month, and they're telling us the story behind Fuse, which I'm mm. quite interested in actually, because uh, Fuse is a basic programming language, it's been out on sort of several different systems, but it's just, I don't know whether it's actually out yet or it's coming soon to the Nintendo Switch. Mm. And uh, so I'm quite interested in you can sort of actually buy it and then mm. start programming your own games in, in a basic language. Um, so I'm quite interested in that actually, that might be worth checking out. And uh, maybe we'll do something on that on the Retro Gamer Show in the future. Um, what else is in here? There's also, i tell you what, I was glad, glad to see a new section, a new sort of feature each month is our friend Quang from Azobi Tech. Mm. I'm uh, sure most people in the retro gaming community by now know who Quang is. He's the guy, one of one of the guys wearing these great t-shirts. Um, he's also doing that game, uh, Mau Mau Castle or something yeah. like that. I don't know what's happened to that. It seems to have gone a bit quiet. Does it get a release? I, I'm, I'm sure it is. Um, and also, so like, he's also, if you go to all these, um, so like the Re Revival and the Play Expos, mm. he's, he's always, always there. there yeah, yeah, and he's got a biggest, you would have seen, we've yeah. featured him loads of times. He's always there with his collection of yeah. retro consoles and stuff, and he has them all set up for everyone mm. to play on. Such a great guy to do that. So uh, in his feature every month, he's going to be going through his uh, collection and telling you the history of one mm. of his uh, consoles each month. And uh, this month, or in this issue, he's doing the Commodore Max. So it's going to be interesting to know a little bit more about that. So if anyone wants to get this mag, how do they do it? They can go to fusionmag.com and they can order theirs or they can subscribe to it uh, right now. So Brilliant. yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Right, so next up it's on to something else that again is yet new to the Retro Gamer Show. Now every now and then we're going to be doing a Retro Games Roundup. Now this roundup is going to be of some brand new games that have been made for retro consoles you know so there's so many new games being made for like the Commodore 64 the Spectrum and all that today uh, for the Mega Drive even so we're going to feature some of those games and we're also going to be featuring some of the sort of like new games like by all the indie developers you know sort of new retro style games that have been made for today's systems so here's our first ever Games Roundup If you are a Metal Slug fan like me, you are going to love this first game in our roundup, Blazing Chrome, from the developer Joy Masher. In Blazing Chrome, the world is under the domination of machines, putting the few humans left alive to the edge of total extermination. Blazing Chrome features co-op shooting action, fast-paced combat, fully armoured vehicles, special weapons and yes, loads of huge scary looking robots. We'd say that Blazing Chrome definitely looks like a must for all arcade action game fans. So if you're interested in picking this game up it's going to be available on a whole host of services including Steam, GOG, PS4, Xbox One and even the Nintendo Switch. Next up on this month's roundup, we have Man Cave for the Commodore 64. Man Cave is the latest release from Cytronic Software and from the team that produced the fun scuba romp Exploding Fish. The game revolves around our hero, Richard Morningwood, mm. father of two brat kids, Brad and Kyle, husband to the long-suffering Betty and son-in-law to the totally terrifying Fanny. On arriving home from work one evening, Richard sees that his precious man cave has been turned inside out by his mischievous kids. They have discovered his secret stash of adult magazines from his days as a teenager and spread them all around the house for his wife to find. This has done nothing good for his already extreme stress levels and his poor heart is now working overtime. As the player you must guide Richard around his house and collect up all his magazines before his rising stress levels have fatal consequences.
This cool little game features a huge storyline, detailed high res characters, bonus levels, cutscenes, a boss battle, a hall of fame, and yes, even trophies! Man Cave is available to order now from Cytronic Software in standard cassette format, a special clamshell tape edition just limited to 50 copies, a budget C64 disc and a premium plus C64 disc. The game is also available as a digital download, which can be played on C64 emulators, on the C64 Mini or on a real C64 if you have the facilities to do so. Next up, if you are in the market for a new ZX Spectrum game, then let us introduce you to Effin Balls. Yes, you did hear correctly, that is the title. This is an arcade maze game and you control a ball called Bob, who just wants to be left alone, but alas, others have different intentions and are set to seek out Bob and pop him. The aim is to navigate Bob through each level, avoiding obstacles and enemies, and to get your way to the exit. Once you've got your copy of Effin Balls downloaded, you'll find it comes with a very handy PDF file, and that explains all the different types of obstacles and blocks that can help Bob on his journey. This game features fun yet challenging gameplay, plenty of levels to visit and smooth controls that don't hinder your bouncing ball of fun. But the best news is that this game is completely free to download and we will leave a link to the game in the video description. And finally on this month's roundup, as many of you may know, in 1983 Taito released a mechanical arcade game called Ice Cold Beer. Now in 2019, Megastar presents a digital version of this great classic, especially made for the Commodore 64. To play the game you can either use two joysticks with one in each joystick port, a joystick and keyboard, or you can play using just the keyboard. If you've never seen or played ice cold beer before, you have to tilt a bar back and forth to nudge the ball into the lit hole, while avoiding the others. When the ball is deposited into the correct hole, the ball and bar return to the bottom of the playing field and the next hole lights up. It all sounds a little easy and rather simplistic, but believe us it's a challenging and addictive game. You can download this game now for free and we will put a link to it in the video description as well as all the other games that we've featured in this month's roundup. So there you go, there's our first ever games roundup. I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, so uh, my favourite game in that being Man Cave, Richard Morningwood, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this great little cool game for, yeah, for the Commodore 64. As you can see, got my copy, one of the limited edition of just 50 in this clamshell case, and it's available now from Cytronic Software, and I've been enjoying playing this, so it's a great little game. Right, that's enough of all the new stuff to the Retro Gamer Show. Here's something that we know you guys love. So this show, Show Us Your Collection, is going to be coming from Cine Steve. Yes, now you may remember, we've already mentioned it already on today's show, that we've seen Cine Steve at uh, Revival last month. We showed a bit clip of him last month, getting his uh, Sensible Soccer games signed by Stu Cambridge. 
and uh, after that we were talking you know what a great collection he's got what a great channel and uh, so we thought let's get him involved and see what he'll do show us your collection so thankfully he said yes yeah so it's over to silly steve hey youtube silly steve here james and colin has kindly asked if i wanted to get involved in the three minute collection challenge it's going to be a real quick one so uh, let's get on with it right this is going to be the quickest tour i've ever done in here starting with my dell laptop which is great for old school pc games my japanese candy cabs absolutely love those them end to a running mame at the moment i'm not gonna say what consoles i've got here because you'll be able to see them but i've pretty much got everything mainstream all set up and can literally play on the big screen and the CRTs I've got set up here. Here's my Vectrex running a Vec Fever. I was really lucky to get that. That's where my C64 lives and the SD3IC and the tape emulator. Mega 1200. WHD load that runs and the 500 with the GoTech drive. It's where I do a bit of my streaming. I've got my CD32 down here, and I've got the C64 running at the moment. Going on to the Outrun cab. And then this is my display cabinet where I display a few of my more sought after games. Really happy with this collection actually. This is a full collection of data discs, vinyl, most of them limited edition. This is quite a few of my handhelds and there's my EverDrive collection as well. So let's scan around the games quickly. Bulk of my Amiga collection. And then going on to my Mega Drive collection. I mean, a lot of this is up in the loft as well. So I've just keep running out of room down here. Super Nintendo. My Championship Manager collection. Saturn, N64. I collect for most consoles. My full Vectrex MV collection. I absolutely love the Guitar Hero series and CD32 and then coming down to more modern games I don't own too many modern games and there you go I think that's about three minutes I knew it'd go quick thanks guys so there you go, thanks for doing that Steve, it was really good. I mean, great games room, those arcade cabs, and he's got like just so much stuff going mm. on. He did a great job of fitting all that into the, just the three minutes. And uh, so yeah, thanks for doing that Steve, we really appreciate it. If any of you haven't already subscribed to Steve, go check out his channel, give him a sub. We know you'd appreciate it. Yeah, we'll leave a link to his channel in the description of this video. Now, if you guys out there want to participate in Show Us Your Collection, please get in touch, we'd be Glad to hear from you. Yeah, it'd be good to have you on. Right, Colin, we know how much you love the Vectrex, and I'm jealous because I don't own one. Yeah, I do actually love the Vectrex, and I'm buying more and more stuff for it all the time. And there's actually a new book out for it, so take a look at this. So today I'm going to be taking a look at this book, All Hail the Vectrex, the Ultimate Collector's Review Guide. Now, this has been put together by the classic game room producer, Mark Bustler. All Hail the Vectrex is currently available from Amazon. The main blurb for the book reads All Hail the Vectrex contains more than 25 full colour Vectrex video game reviews, a thorough and entertaining hardware review, homebrew recommendations, and a special look at the Vectrex 3D imager and Vectorcade arcade joystick. The book is currently available for Kindle at £10.23 or as a paperback for £23.65. Slightly odd pricing points, but I guess they're just a straight dollars to pounds conversion. 
Anyway, call me old fashioned, but if I'm buying a book, I have to have a physical copy. Something to hold in my hands and to show for my hard earned cash. The book cover isn't the thickest, but it does have a sort of semi gloss finish to it. And the pages, as you would expect from a paperback, are made from a matte paper stock that's not the thickest, but to be fair, isn't the thinnest either. The book, as you would expect, starts with an introduction to the Vectrix and its history. There are some basic images of the Vectrix itself that serve their purpose, but what was really nice and interesting to see are the images of a 1983 Vectrix catalogue. The game reviews in the book are all accompanied by some colourful pictures of the game box art, game overlays and the game's graphics. However, if you've already played most of the Vectrix games library, the reviews themselves won't tell you an awful lot more about the games than what you would already know. But that said, I did enjoy reading the reviews of the few games that I still need to add to my collection, and haven't yet played. Therefore, if you're someone who's just starting out collecting for the Vectrix, or someone who just wants to know more about the Vectrix games library, then I'm glad to say the reviews do include the basic information that you will want to know. At the end of each review there's also a pro tip section with hints and tips on how to best play each game, which is a nice touch and definitely worth a read. There is however a couple of bits of information that I was surprised not to get a mention in the book. The first is that the review of the built-in Vectrix game Mindstorm has no mention that the game crashes due to a bug at the 13th level. Players who called GCE or Milton Bradley in the UK and reported the bug back in the day received a Mindstorm 2 cartridge free of charge in the post. Basically the same game but without the bug. Only a few people bothered to do this though, making the original Mindstorm 2 cartridge extremely rare and highly collectible today. The second is that in the review of the game Clean Sweep, a Pac-Man style clone, there is no mention of the extremely rare version of the game entitled Mr. Boston Clean Sweep. This is the exact same game, but was a promotional release for the liquor company Mr. Boston. The only differences between the two versions, apart from the Mr. Boston branding on the packaging, overlay and cartridge, is that an ad for Mr. Boston appears before the game starts, and that the players control a top hat instead of a vacuum cleaner. The book goes on to take a brief look at the Vectrix light pen and reviews the software that was made especially for it. Also as promised in the book blurb on Amazon, there is a special look at the Vectrix 3D imager, with some nice pictures of this early 3D headset and reviews of the 3D Vectrix games. But I was a little disappointed with the promised look of the Vectorcade arcade joystick, which is just a few black and white images. I know there possibly isn't much to say about an arcade stick, but having seen and used one of these arcade sticks in the flesh, I can say it's a fantastic looking bit of kit that at least deserves some nice colour images. I was also a bit disappointed with the homebrew recommendation section, which although mentioned a few games I haven't heard of, seemed to mainly mention games made a few years ago, and didn't mention any of the great releases from the past couple of years. So probably by now you're thinking that I don't like this book very much, but actually I do. I mean if you want a book that just catalogues all the Vectrix games, tells you a little bit about the hardware you can get for the Vectrix and uh, some of the homebrew titles, then you can't really go wrong. It's a, a good book, but I just can't help feeling that maybe the author hurried it a little bit. Maybe he just spent a little bit more time on it. He could have made the book a whole lot better. So Colin, you're a bit unsure about this. Yeah, no, it's not that I'm unsure. It is a good book, like I say. It's just that you know, I thought it could be just with a little bit more time and care. It could have been so much better, you know. Uh, what do you think of it? Just have a quick look at it. I think it's great. I mean, you're 
super hardcore when it comes to yeah. backtrack. So is there, is there anything major you think that they should have included that didn't? I said, it's like I said in the review, it's just like the little bits of information that they could have put in about maybe they're supposed to be like about, you know, like a, a collector's guide. And there's a few games, a few bits of information they left out about the rarest games that they could have included, you know, so. But it's good, but like I say, it's just, I mean, that's just my, my sort of like view, you know, so I think that if you've got the book, let us know if you think any different. It'd be uh, good to know what you think about it as well. I like it because there's loads of big pictures. <laughs> anyway, so uh, moving on, it's now time for this month's Games Chart Flashback, which, unbelievably, it's got a new look as well. Yes, we are flashing back to January 1993 with the SNES chart. And kicking off the top five, it's a top racer, it's Top Gear. You won't believe the power. You won't believe the control. You won't believe the jumps, the curves, or the feeling you get until you experience it for yourself. Wow, that's fast. Only on the next generation from Nintendo. Now you're racing with power, superpower. Looking back at 1993 definitely makes me feel prehistoric. And at four, it's Joe and Mac in Caveman Ninja. Long before the World Wildlife Fund threatened legal action against Vince Vaughn, in at number three, it's Super WWF WrestleMania. In Act 2, it's The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, a landmark title for Nintendo and widely considered to be one of the greatest video games of all time. Thank you. 
And at number one in January 1993 was the mighty Street Fighter 2. Stay calm. Concentrate on the screen. Street Fighter 2 is on Super Nintendo. From the arcades, the ultimate combat game. Each fighter has a different technique, an acrobatic move, a hidden punch. It's on the streets now, exclusively on Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo with Street Fighter 2. It's unbeatable. Well, that was a quick look at the SNES chart from January 1993 and what a great year that was. If there are any good games in that list that you really enjoyed, let us know in the comments. Yeah, anyway, so now it's time to move on and uh, coming towards the end of the show now. And there's always towards the end of the show, we have a roundup of all the retro gaming events that's coming on in the near future. So it's time for What's On. So this month there's not very much on on the retro gaming events calendar, but there is UK Pinfest, the UK's only dedicated pinball event. UK Pinfest promises to have approximately 100 machines, all set to free play, and with machines dating from the 60s to the very latest releases. So where's this event being held you may ask, well here's James with the details. Well, as you know, I love my pinball and this is being held at the Mercure Hotel in Daventry, Northamptonshire and it's over the weekend of the 23rd, the 24th and the 25th of August. Here you'll find more tables than IKEA, but one thing to note is the Friday evening is for VIPs only. To find out more information, visit ukpinfest.com. So moving on to September and Swag is back. Yes, Southwest Amiga Group meet number 10. We're both really looking forward to this. The Swag meets just get bigger and better. It's being held on Saturday the 7th of September at the same venue as previous meetings in Chipping Sodbury near Yate. We covered Swag meet number 9 in a previous video so if you'd like to see what it's like to be at one of these events go check that out. We'll leave a link to it in the video description. And for further information on Swag Meet 10, go visit southwestamiga.org.uk or visit the Southwest Amiga Group Facebook page. Also in September, the Bristol Gaming Market is back on Sunday the 22nd, being held at the usual venue, the Passenger Shed, right next to Temple Meads train station in Bristol. Yes, of course, it wouldn't be a what's on section without a gaming market, would it? And we're looking forward, as usual, to going along to this one. If you want more information, visit bristolgamingmarket.com. So there you go, that's uh, all the retro gaming events that are coming up very shortly that we know about, and uh, no doubt we'll be popping along to one or two of those. And uh, that really is it for this month's show. Time has flown, you know, it uh, always flies, as they say, when you're having fun. So we hope you've enjoyed the show, and uh, thanks very much to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel, everyone who's been with us for, since the beginning and uh, commenting on our videos. We really appreciate all your support, and uh, thank you all so much for that. And uh, yeah, so... Let us know what you think of the new intro and the new segments. Oh yeah, let us know about the new stuff, yeah. But until next time, James. What they gotta do? Keep it retro, everyone!